Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about um, what AUKAD CIS is, or the Component Information System. And we're going to go through the differences between effectively an AUKAD Capture Flow and an AUKAD uh, CIS flow. So traditionally with an AUKAD Capture Flow, um, you would use the, uh, the place part command to effectively place a graphical library part down. Um, you could use the place part command, you could also use the search providers to go to people like Ultra Librarian and Tomexis and get things like schematic symbols, PCB footprints, and 3D step models. But you would use this kind of flow to, to, to access the data. So I would use place part, I'd find a graphical library, I'd find the part that I'm interested in, and I'd then effectively go and place them down on the canvas. And then um, I would add properties to these graphical symbols. So if we just change this to the current properties view, um, like manufacturer, manufacturer's part number, distributor, cost, quantity on hand, whatever information you wanted to put on, your company part number, there's all sorts of stuff. So um, this the, the properties that you add here would effectively drive your bit of materials or any reports that you had to do. And they would also drive things like um, a net list if you transfer in properties over to the PCB. So that's kind of the traditional flow. That's fine for kind of individual symbols like this, but if you were to say, go and add, so let's just go and find a discrete part. And then we'll just go and add on our resistor. With a part like that, if you're going to add lots and lots of properties to this, this property, you know, you would effectively have to have a, an individual symbol for each resistor, footprint, value, tolerance, size, etc. So if you had, you could potentially have a very large library of resistors if you wanted to do it properly and place all these properties. You can obviously add the properties manually inside a design and you can edit properties manually inside a design, but that can be uh, error prone and people can make mistakes and, and they can lead to errors on bill of materials, etc. Um, some people then add the properties in the schematic symbols themselves and then just replace the symbols over. But again, you're relying on human intervention to, to make sure that you're not making any errors. So th the better way to do it effectively would be to use um, CIS. So uh, the component information system allows you to um, still place a graphical library part. But what you do is all the properties are effectively controlled by a Windows compliant ODBC database. So if you look on any computer, you go to the control panel of that computer. There is an administrative tools option, and then there's something called ODBC data sources, 64 bits, the system DSN tab, and here Capture CIS effectively talks to the ODBC data source link. Um, so the database could effectively be a Microsoft Excel file, it could be a Microsoft Access database. Uh, the preferred one now is, a, a, is an SQL database. Kent's provides you with a couple of sample databases, so there's a, there's a bench access uh, 17.4 D currently at the moment uh, or 17.4.0 that allows you to tie directly into the database and, and that will give you an example you see you see that on the when you first start the tools that's the default one that's, that's set up there's also a, uh, a component information portal CIP which Cadence provides and this allows you to talk directly to people like uh, Farnell, Mauser, DigiKey to access their parametric data um, it's a predetermined database structure that's there already it's fixed comes with a 5,000 part starter library and comes with all the schematic symbols, PCB footprints, etc. that you need. So that's a, there is another video showing the CIP and what that gives you. So that's kind of the basics of it, but what that does by having that all set, so having all your properties stored in a, in a database, um, we can then use effectively the place database part or the Z key. This then launches the, the, the CIS Explorer window, so I get a list of effectively all the different tables, so capacitors, connectors, crystals, oscillators, etc. So choose resistors, um, we'll descend down into the folder structure. There's a list of all my 0805 resistors. You can see effectively I get a list of uh, all the properties, so part type, description, value, PCB footprint, schematic part, and then there's manufacturer part number, pins, operating temperature, as many properties as you want to add to this as possible. So I can then effectively select that part. I would then get a preview of the schematic symbol, a preview of the PCB footprint driven from these kind of two property values here. Um, I'm also getting some relational database here. So I've got manufacturing data for my same company part number. So different manufacturers and I can then output that on things like bill of materials, which is quite useful. To add those parts, I'd effectively just double click that part, bring it in and I can then go and place those parts directly onto the canvas. And if we look at those parts, do an edit properties, all that property information is effectively transferred to the part that I can use. Um, and then that would help me drive, as I said, my bin of materials and my net list. Any changes I need to make, I would make in the database from a property point of view. And then we could automatically update that using something called part manager, which I'm going to cover. So that's kind of the, the, the basics of, of 
a, a basic CIS uh, database. So let me just close this design. What we'll do is we'll just open uh, a design that's a little bit more, um, got a few more components on it, uh, and we'll go through some of the other features of the component information system. So once my design is open, um, I can actually uh, output things like bill of materials. The traditional way in AllCAD capture flow would be tools and bill of materials. You effectively put in your, your header string and your combined property string. So I've effectively got a property called item, quantity, reference value. If I wanted to add man manufacturer, I could add a slash T brackets manufacturer, slash T man brackets manufacturer's part number, etc. And if those properties exist on the parts, it would then output that in a bill of materials in an Excel file. With the CIS option, what we do is we actually get a reports functionality here. So reports, CIS bill of materials, and standard or crystal reports. So if we choose a standard option, um, I can effectively generate some template files. So I've got an engineering bill of materials here. I've got one called Steve. I've got one called Test. You can build your own kind of template files here and access any of the properties that are available in your database. Um, and make report files. So this could be a reliability report. It could be a bit a bill of materials. It could have the costing information on. It depends on whatever property you want to use. You can actually drive that through using this report template functionality. I can include the relational database so I can have my multiple manufacturers for the same company part number displayed in the bill of materials. I can include mechanical data. So uh, mechanical data could be something like if you had a specific uh, a DIN 41612 connector type that always used two screws, two nuts, two washers. You could have that associated so that it would then output that data automatically with you having to add those to the bomb. Um, you can output all your variant information in one go. So if you've got different variants, and I'm going to come to that when I come to part manager, you can actually output all the variant information in one go and generate all the different report files that you need. So quite a useful function from a report generator point of view. If we open part manager, so we'll select the design name, we can either go to tools and part manager. And down the bottom here, I can open it or I can just right mouse button on the project name and just do a right mouse button part manager. I effectively get a list of all the individual parts that are available inside my design. Um, and you can see they're all in this kind of approved defined state at the moment. So what I can do is this is the, the status of the parts that are in the schematic. I can synchronize these with the status of the parts in the database. So if we've made changes to the database, I haven't manually got to go and update all the parts. I can get the system to do this for me. I can do that by selecting the tools menu and then there's an update all part status. Um, we'll just say yes to that and we'll just yes to all to update everything. So you'll find all these parts of it if you go into this green status, this approved current, which means that the, the properties in the schematic are in sync with the properties in the database. So I now know that I'm happy I could send this design out for net listing or to generate bill of materials and I know that the data I've got here is valid. If I did need to make changes to this design, I could effectively, I could say, let's do a sort by value. For example, if you're used to doing bomb scrubs and you're trying to limit the number of reels you've got on your components, you can sort by value, maybe find some values that you kind of want to change or you might be able to group together. And you could then maybe group select the parts together. So um, let's just select these 243 amp resistors, for example. I could do a right click and I could link to the database part. Um, this then opens the CIS Explorer window and allows me to kind of search for, so if I was going to go to the query tab, instead of 243 ohms, maybe I said these will need to be um, 562 ohms, for example. I can make changes this way, pick the part that I'm interested in. If I'm happy with that, I can then link that back and that would physically make the change in the parts and I'm now using a different value for all those resistors. So lots of ways to kind of globally do everything together. As I said, I'm not going to do that in this example here. So let's go back to part manager. The other thing that Part Manager gives me is the ability to do bomb variants. So um, I could have one DSN file and I could have multiple different variants for this design. So um, you effectively split your design up into groups and subgroups. Um, so I've got com a common folder where all the default parts are in. They're in every single variant in my design. But in this example, I've got a channel one that effectively has all the items fitted or not fitted. The same for channel two. For memory, I've got all of the memory fitted or half of the memory fitted. I've then made a bomb variant here that shows me those options. Um, so I've got not fitted for channel one, fitted for channel two, uh, 
half the memory fitted. To make a new bomb variant, it's very, very easy. We just do a right mouse button, new bomb variant. We'll give it a name, let's call this version two. And then you just drag and drop the folders down to come in and what you need. So in this example, I'm gonna have not fitted for both. And we'll have, uh, all. Of, uh, let's go for all of the memory. So once your bomb variant options are there, we can then go to the main canvas and obviously output your bill of materials from that option. So you'll see report, CIS, bill of materials and standards. There's the version, so I could output that as a bill of materials. I can also show graphically um, what that design is going to look like. There's a view, variant view mode. This allows me to effectively uh, set the design to be version related. So this would be then version one. So if I then go and look at, uh, let's go and look at the outputs page. Let's open DAMP one. You can see here, these parts are effectively grayed out and not fitted because that's the, the, the print, so I could, or that's, that's what I've set in my variant, so I could then effectively use that for an intelligent PDF and get the accurate information. So all the property information effectively is now not fitted for this specific part. That's just a brief overview of what CIS can give you. Um, it's, there's lots of other things as well, so it's worthwhile having a look at the CIS option for your database for parts.